Geography. Through blood runs power of land. If concentrate, can feel ancient widow in every beat of art. In every breath, Kislev is land. Land is Kislev. We are Kislev. From Baradoya, some random hag witch. To gaze upon the beautiful snow-encrusted lands of the realm of the Ice Queen is to also gaze upon a bloodied plain of snow, violence, and barren tundra that stretches as far as the eye can see. This inhospitable land is Kislev, a kingdom that has been the first barrier between the lands of the far north and the fertile lands of the far south. To live in this land is to know bloodshed and misery without end, a land that only breeds the most hardiest of warriors to combat the threats that are constantly posed against the world. The Kislevite people are these same warriors, a race of wolf-tough and self-reliant people that are often seen by their more southerly neighbours as nothing more than barbarians. But such lack of foresight into the minds of a Kislevite is ill-founded, as due to living at the very borders of madness and corruption. The people of Kislev have valued bravery, duty, and determination above all other traits. For living at the edges of the mortal world and the realm of chaos, the Kislevites had to give it their all, lest they and their kingdom should finally fall under the servitude of the Dark Gods. To the south and southwest, the kingdom of Kislev is bordered by the great and powerful Empire, a country to which Kislev and her people have always been engaged in an internal brotherhood of arms and comradeship after the great victory won and fought by Magnus the Pious, the saviour of the great war against chaos. For centuries, the warriors of Kislev and the soldiers of the Empire have fought side by side against the forces of the Dark Gods that have continued to assail at their gates for millennium. And although relations between the two nations were not constantly harmonious, they have always responded to the call of battle whenever the other found itself in peril. The great expanses of the Sea of Claws marks the western coast of Kislev, and those communities that survive through fishing and whaling must constantly face the terrors of the Norse raiders, from which they sail across those perilous waters in their eagerness for riches and plunder. The Kingdom of Kislev has no official fleets or armadas at her disposal, and the only fleets of ships located anywhere near these coastlines are owned by independent merchant princes from the trade city of Erengrad. Thus, it is almost guaranteed that coastal communities have to fend for themselves upon the spotting of another Norse raiding party coming upon their shores. To the northwest, along the northern coast of the Sea of Claws, lie the desolate and often barren and cold areas of tundra known by many as Troll Country. This land has earned its name 
by the huge diversity of trolls that has made their homes there. A result that stems from the constant flow of mutated winds flowing constantly southwards from the northern waste. As such, the land itself is highly infertile and barren, resulting in a lack of agriculture and established settlements. Several attempts have been made to settle in these hostile lands from many different races of people, the most prominent of which were the now near-extinct Ropsmen tribes. However, ever since their near annihilation by the Gospodars, no race of people has managed to tame the harsh territory. Not even the horse lords of northern Kislev have any desire to lay claim to such a cursed and unforgivable land such as this one. To the east, the land has given way to large tracts of woodland that grows towards the foothills of the world's edge mountains. From here, numerous tribes of orcs and goblins that have crossed the mountain passes have now made permanent settlements and villages, plaguing both dwarf and Kizavite towns settled along the mountain roads. It is also from here that the Kizavites and Dwarves make regular trade with one another, a mutual benefit that has aided in both nations' prosperity. The Steps It ain't natural to live out there without a good roof of stone above you. I kept my wagon with a big hat on, so as I didn't go mad like them. Nary a decent mountain to be had within eyeshot, and all but open skies and empty land all around you. I tell you, it ain't natural. From Demzad Urgrimson, a dwarf merchant of Karaz Akarak. Unlike the lands of other kingdoms, the unique feature of Kislev's geography is the massive, sprawling grassland that covers much of her territory. These grasslands are known as steppes, a vast landscape where a traveller is never warm and the air is parched and dry from a lack of moisture. Very little rain falls on the steppes, meaning only the hardiest grass and plants can survive in such a cold climate. However, when the rain does fall, it usually comes in a thunderous downpour, flooding the nearby banks and rivers and stopping all but the most foolhardy from travelling. Aside from the common small villages known as Stanitsas, Virtually the only inhabitants of the steppes are the nomadic tribesmen who roam the steppes in groups, constantly searching for new grazing ground to feed their herds of livestock. The soil in the northern lands of Kislev is particularly poor, and only in the more temperate and fertile south can farmers coax crops from the land without much difficulty, forcing most Ungol tribes to rely on livestock. Northern marauders, also known as Kiazak, have also dwelled in the steppes for many generations. But these ferocious warrior tribesmen do not grow any crop or rear any animals. Instead, they take what they need by force attacking local villages and ambushing any travellers they come across for gold and food. Such is the vastness of the steppes that it is next to impossible to hunt all these raiders out of their lands for good. The Climate Bah! All that kvass makes them mad! 
Who would want to live there anyway? The summers are cold, the winters are freezing, and if the nomads don't kill you, the marauders will. I'm telling you, they're welcome to the place. From Sebastian Vortz, a merchant from Null. Kislevite's climate varies enormously, ranging from long, dark winters to warm, balmy summers when the long grasses can catch fire. During particularly hot summers, which is a rarity in Kislev, this threat is particularly dangerous, for such step fires can spread with unimaginable rapidity since the grass is so dry and many unwary travelers have been trapped and burned to death by such a conflagration. Such fires are rare, and for the most part, Kislev is a cold, bleak land with little sunlight to warm the body. Kislev's deadly cold winters are infamous throughout the old world, and when the snows come, the land is held tight in its iron grip. Temperatures plummet to far below freezing, and to be caught out on the steppe in winter is to die. Snow blankets the land in white, and such is the unending vista of featureless whiteness that covers the land that the Kisavites have a term for such emptiness. It is known as Raspotitsa, which means roadlessness, and no one that values their life dares to travel in such times. Even outside the months of winter, the northern reaches of the steppe are often covered in snow year round, and the temperatures never reach far above freezing. When spring finally comes to Kislev, it brings with it a mixture of snow and rain, and with the break of the winter, the steppe comes alive with people, as tribes migrate to find fresh grazing. Kiyazaks seek out new prey, and caravans of merchants set off with fresh cargoes to take to far-off markets. Travel in spring is dangerous, as the icy landscape becomes muddy, and wagons often become trapped in the mud, where they will no doubt be abandoned to enable the caravan to move on before it becomes prey for Kiyazak. Autumn is when the people of Kislev hunker down to weather the harsh winter to come. Old men warily shake their heads and declare that this coming winter will be hard. But it's something of a tradition for the elderly of Kislev to complain that each coming winter will be the hardest yet, and then proclaim how the winters were harder when they were younger. In the autumn, firewood is stocked, livestock slaughtered, and crops stockpiled, so there will be enough food to last until spring.